going on locks mob adding a rating here from locksdfs.com bringing you our official uh monday night football breakdown walkthrough whatever you want to call it but in this video i'm just going to be talking about the giants versus san francisco game uh that we got going on here in about six hours um before we get into that though just here's our uh here's my twitter account if y'all want to go ahead and give it a follow um it's at really addy on twitter um this is where i just post you know i talk about sports so if y'all want to come talk to me about sports or ask me any questions about this showdown slate or you know i mean this nhl slate if you want to talk nba with me or next football slate go ahead reach out to me shoot me a dm um i'll always love to respond to you guys uh here um also follow locks dfs on twitter at locks dfs right here um this is where we kind of post like when lineups are up or how we're doing um just being transparent with y'all on our records and so far, that's been pretty good. Um, over here, we got our store. Uh, it's locksdfs.com backslash shop. Takes you to our store. Uh, we got our all-access season pass. This gives you access to every piece of content we provide for the entire year. This is the same thing except just for a month. Um, both of them are great values, a great way to come check us out. Um, you're probably going to make your money back pretty quickly, so it's not a bad investment. Um, we've been crushing it this year. I actually took an L on NHL on Sunday. Um, but that brings us to 15 of our past 18 that we've still won. So it's still been good. Um, and, you know, the losses here and there, they're, they're good. They're good. They're good for the ego. They keep you in check. Um, however, basketball is not used to those losses because Taylor has won 13 of his past 14 slates in NBA. So he's been crushing it over there. So if y'all are interested in any other sport aside from football um, or football as well, because we obviously provide football as well. Come check us out. Uh, give us a follow and, and check out the website as well. Um, but with all that being said, let's just back out of these tabs and let's get right into the game. So we got San Francisco home to the New York Giants. They are they open as two and a half point favorites. Um, they've received 38 percent of the bets, as you can see right here. Yet they have gained half a point on the spread. So that shows that. The sharp money is a little bit onto San Francisco. Not nothing too crazy, but there is some sharp money leaning on this San Francisco spread. Um, I don't know if that's more indicative of just Eli Manning being washed or, or San Francisco being at home coming off. I think they last played on Thursday, so they've gotten sort of a full week of preparation in. Um, but regardless, we see the over jump a little bit from 43.5 to 44.5. Still a fairly low over under considering the state of the NFL and how pass happy and uh offensively happy it is so it's a pretty low low scoring game but definitely something we can still take advantage of for a showdown so i pull it up on DraftKings right now i think the first thing we should talk about is the injuries so a couple injuries on the san francisco side of the ball offensively pierre garçon will be missing from this game uh that'll open up this sort of range right here where we got uh richie james jr dante pettis Kendrick Bourne, all these guys. I'll get into them a little bit later um, about who I'm most interested in based off of that. Um, we also have Raheem Moster, who broke his arm last game in a pretty gruesome fashion. So uh, thoughts go out to him recovering with that. But what that does for the fantasy-wise is it opens up Matt Breida to sort of take control of this backfield, as well as Alfred Morris, who will mix in as a change of pace back. I don't really know what that means as far as change of pace back because uh, Matt Breed is fast and, and Alfred Morris is slow. So I guess if you're changing pace from fast to slow, it makes sense. But uh, I guess he's a change of pace back. Um, and he honestly, uh, all jokes aside, he does carry some value for this showdown slate that, that I'll also talk about because there's a good chance that he could get into the end zone here. Um, and if he gets in the end zone at 3.8K, he is a... I mean, that's really all you want because he's he's around the price of a kicker, and the kicker's probably going to put up around like eight, seven to eight points, and a touchdown will give you right around that. So definitely interesting there. Um, but aside from that, we have a few injuries on the San Francisco defensive side of the ball as well. They're missing Jakiski Tart, or they'll most likely be missing Jakiski Tart, who's their primary tight end defender. He's their strong safety Um and then they also are missing Ruben Foster, who's one of their better pass rushers, as well as their run stopper. So a plus for Saquon Barkley there uh, with Ruben Foster out and a plus for Evan Ingram with Jakiski Tart out. And Evan Ingram is really cheap as well. So um, he's also an interesting player on the slate. But 
let's actually um i'm not used to doing these videos on my own i usually have a few other guys with me uh but taylor's really grinding nba right now so we're gonna go ahead and just uh i'm gonna try and break this down solo wise and usually we, the way we start these videos is like uh, who do we like to play as as our expensive guy? You know, who do we want to play in our captain spot? Uh, do we want it to even be an expensive guy? So I'll go ahead and say that my favorite play on this entire slate um, is Saquon Barkley. Uh, I don't think that's uh, breaking news or anything. But um, this, I mean, it is a generational back who is on pace to break Matt Forte's receiving record for running back. So he is sort of locked in. As a super high floor, super high ceiling guy, which is kind of who you want in your captain spot, despite the hefty price tag. Um, and if he's not in your captain spot, I feel like he's a guy who just has to be in your lineup. It's really, really tough to just get away from him. So um, I'll be locking him in personally. What also helps me lock him in is the fact that if we filter down here, I'm on fo footballoutsiders.com uh, team defense. If we go here and we filter it by uh, running backs, we see this is pass catching running backs, how running backs do in the passing game versus certain teams. We see that Oakland, Tampa Bay, Minnesota, uh, sort of teams that we've just been targeting are, are do poorly versus versus these pass catching running backs. Um, we see that San Francisco is sort of in the middle of the pack. There's they're what is it like four seventeenth or something in the league versus them. However, if we filter it by pass attempts per game to the running back position. Because that's really what we're going for. We're going for the opportunity. Because Saquon is good enough to get us the result. So we kind of want the opportunity. So if we filter it by pass attempts per game, San Francisco jumps up near the top of the league at 8.3 pass attempts per game to the running back position. That just boosts Saquon for me even more. Because Saquon's a guy who's got kind of a floor of 8 targets. So if they're already funneling 8 targets towards the running back position, uh, give me that, that floor with Saquon all day. He's a guy, I mean, look at him, 12, 10, 10 targets the past three weeks. He's just got one of the highest floors on the slate and uh, probably the highest upside as well. So I love to start with him in my captain spot. Um, I'm sort of, I go back and forth on showdowns as far as what's more optimal, whether I like to throw like sort of a cheap guy in there or just go with the best player. Uh, last showdown, I went with Carson Wentz in my captain spot, just sort of with the best player to see how that works. I think this showdown, I may go with a kicker. Because I just want to get in all these, or a kick, or like a guy like Evan Ingram, or someone who's cheaper, someone who's down there. Um, because I do want to get in a lot of these weapons. I'd like to get in Nick Mullins, George Kittle, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but that's enough on Saquon Barkley. Sort of keep talking about these uh, expensive guys. Odell Beckham Jr. Um, he'll be matched up. Sort of all, I mean, he'll be all over the field because the 49ers, uh, they have a stationary cornerback, a stationary left cornerback in Richard Sherman, who is their best cornerback. And you can also see that via footballoutsiders.com if we go to, uh, if we filter like it by, because I mean, in general, uh, the Giants rank 27th versus the pass, 18th versus the rush, and San Francisco's about the middle of the pack versus both 17th versus the pass, 19th versus the rush. However, if we go down here and we filter it by number one wide receivers versus San Francisco, we see that they kind of pop as uh, one of the better teams. They're 11th in the league versus number one wide receivers. And I think that speaks more to Richard Sherman. Um, he's, he's had a good year despite people thinking he's washed. He, he's been pretty good. Um, but if you filter it by number two wide receiver, now we see San Francisco is near the bottom of the league. I mean, they're 25th in the league versus number two wide receivers, 20, 28th in the league versus number three wide receivers. So... There is an opportunity to target guys not facing Richard Sherman. Uh, Odell runs about 50% of his routes from the left side of the field, so he'll be on Richard Sherman a little bit unless, or I should say Richard Sherman will be on him a little bit, unless the, the Giants coaching staff tries to scheme him away. Um, and then they might just throw their other guy out there like Benny Fowler or, or, or uh, Russell Shepard. They'll just throw one of those guys out there and maybe sacrifice them to Richard Sherman, which is what they would do if they were smart. We saw the Rams do that with Josh Reynolds when Cooper Cup was out, just sacrifice him to Richard Sherman. Um, or at least game plan for that because Richard Sherman ended up being out that game. Um, one guy who will avoid Richard Sherman for the most part, actually almost entirely, is Sterling Shepard because he is a primary slot wide receiver. Sterling Shepard's got a pretty high floor as well. Um, he's received seven targets in all but one game this year. A lot of this came without Evan Ingram, who may, in theory, cut into a few of his targets because they do run routes in a similar part of the field, which is the middle of the field. Um, so, but, uh, but again, Sterling Shepard, he is a super safe play because you can basically lock him into seven. 
seven ish targets. Um, aside from that, uh, we got. I mean, we got uh, we got to talk about the San Francisco side. Nick Mullins ripped apart a, a, a horrible Oakland Raiders secondary last week, but he's sort of facing a, a similar type of secondary. I mean, their best cornerback in the Giants has been Janoris Jenkins, and he has been one of the worst cornerbacks in the league this year. Um, he's allowed a bunch of touchdown catches, uh, and their other two cornerbacks have just been just been just been just as bad. So. Nick Mullins, again, as we saw, the Giants are 29th in the league as far as pass defense goes. And the most important thing uh, when talking about Nick Mullins is uh, is that he should have a clean pocket. I mean, if we go still on footballassiders.com, we're looking at uh, adjusted sack rate uh, as far as defensive line goes. The Giants are, man, they are garbage. They're generating Oakland-esque pressure, which is none uh, 3.5% adjusted sack rate. They only have 10 sacks on the entire year. Um, this I should mention that this San Francisco offensive line is not that good. Neither is the Giants offensive line. They rank respectively 25th and 26th in the league in adjusted sack rate. They both allowed 31 sacks this year. But um, one team is more apt to take advantage of it than the other. Uh, and that team being San Francisco. Because San Francisco actually has a pretty good pass rush. Uh, they are missing Ruben Foster, but... He was out last week as well, um, and they still generated, I think, eight sacks in Week 9 versus the Raiders. Uh, and so they're ranked eighth in the league in adjusted sack rate. Definitely more apt to take advantage of that poor Giants offensive line. I don't recommend playing a defense on the slate, uh, but I do think if you want to play defense, I'd probably lean toward the, the San Francisco 49ers defense. I like the fact that they're at home, and, I mean, the Giants are a pretty bad offense with, with Eli Manning at the helm, and they're still only projected to score 20.75. Uh, I would just prefer to have my entire roster filled out with skill position players, um, and that includes kickers, in my opinion. Uh, what else is there? So we got George Kittle, who's just been a sort of uh, quarterback-proof uh, tight end. He's caught touchdown passes from all three of the wide or I mean, excuse me, all three of the quarterbacks that San Francisco has started this year. Um, so he's a solid option. Uh, the New York Giants do have pretty good tight end defense. Uh, I believe they rank in, like, the top 10. Yeah, they're sixth in the league as far as defending tight ends, um, as opposed to San Francisco, who is 20th in the league and is now missing their primary tight end defender in Jakiski Tart. So I do like the value you're getting on Evan Ingram. Um, George Kittle's a guy who we should expect him to see a, a, a target boost with Pierre Garçon missing from this game. So I do like him. I think he is probably my top option here. Um, I mean, you could go ahead and, and and say the same thing about Marquise Goodwin. And Marquise Goodwin's really, really cheap. Um, I mean, he's he's. Uh, you could make a case for him being the primary option in this passing game, and he's priced below the the third option in the New York Giants passing game, which is Sterling Shepard. So I love the value on Marquise Goodwin at six point four K. Janoris Jenkins is not a guy who's going to be able to keep up with him. Um, this dude is a track star Olympian, so he will. Uh, He'll be able to burn whatever quarterback they put on him. It's just a matter of Nick Mullins getting him the ball. Um, but he should, as we talked about, have plenty of time to throw. So I like going with that Mullins-Goodwin stack, and you can even add Kittle to it um, if you want to kind of get all your exposure there. Uh, we talked about Matt Breida, a uh, talented running back who's just sort of not been able to come overcome nagging injury issues. But he last played on Thursday in Oakland and had a, a sort of modest game. But Raheem Mostert, again, broke his arm. Raheem Mostert was a guy who was uh, siphoning about 10 to 12-ish touches a game for Matt Breida. So th that now opens up for him, as well as Alfred Morris um, at 3.8K. I think we'll see Matt Breida maybe push 20 touches this game, which would certainly put him in play. Um, the Giants have just an average run defense. Um, I already mentioned it, but... They do rank 18th in the league versus the run. They have Damon Snacks Harrison uh, in the middle of their in the middle of their uh, defensive line. He's he's always been one of the uh, the league's best run defenders. I believe he was the league's best the past two years. So um, despite having him, they still rank sort of middling in the league. So I do like Matt Breida in this matchup, and I also think you can make a case for Alfred Morris to to get you a touchdown there at the end. Um, with all that being said, is there anything else? I am missing. Uh, yes, let's talk about the cheap San Francisco wide receivers. So um, last week, Trent Taylor was a healthy scratch. I do think we'll see him crack the lineup. Uh, 
because of of course Pierre Garçon is missing this game. But I think uh, Richie James Jr. He ran twelve routes for them last week. He caught three balls. Um, he he's probably I think he's probably my favorite option. Um, he's a talented rookie. Uh, he took a, a I don't know if any of you were watching that Oakland game because it was a bad game. But he took a, a, a short little pass for a fifty three yard gain. So he's got he's got some ability there. Um, I'll personally, I I think I'll probably avoid this whole range because I, I'm gonna go ahead and go with the uh, like if I'm gonna go down here, I think I like Robbie Gold more than any of these guys. Uh, so I, I think I'm more tempted to just throw in Robbie Gold, throw in the kickers, and that should save you enough salary, um, so that you can get kind of whoever you want. Like uh, for example, I mean I think if you throw in like if I I'll just make a team with you all real quick. If you throw in like a, a you know Robbie Gold in your captain spot, then you can go ahead and you can you can toss in like Saquon, uh, get in both QBs and Eli and Mullins, and then you can get in like Marquise Goodwin, and then you got sixty one hundred, sort of a dead range. You can throw in Evan Ingram, someone like that. Um, it's a, I mean it, it's a it's a solid team. I think the toughest decision in this slate uh, will come down to whether or not you want to play Odell. Because in my personal opinion, and like I said when I started this video, Saquon is a, is a much better play than Odell in this matchup for me. And just in general, um, this is a guy who's going to get like 18 carries in addition to uh, a wide receiver's um, share of targets. So if you get him in and, and assuming you want to play both QBs, which tends to be the, one of the more optimal things you can do in showdown, that leaves you kind of like without uh, Odell. Um, I think I'm comfortable doing that, uh, but again, that's up for y'all to decide. Um, with that being said, I mean, I think one of my one of the teams that I was sort of looking at uh, just early is I think you can get away with throwing like Rosas in your captain spot. I, I should mention that uh, the Giants have um, uh, the 49ers have a little bit better of a red zone defense than the Giants do. Uh, so, all right, let, let me take that back. The Giants have a little bit of red zone defense than the 49ers do, so I'm more interested in Robbie Gold, I think, as those stall as those drives might stall out, and he may end up uh, being the main beneficiary of that. Um, but I think as far as my kicker strategy goes, and I'm not going to talk too much about it, but as far as that goes, um, I sort of just like to hedge on one team with the other with the kicker. So if I if I think that I'm gonna be heavier on uh, the Giants for this matchup then I might just hedge with the San Francisco kicker and hope that they don't score touchdowns and I get the most valuable points out of those drives finishing. Um, one last thing I usually like to talk about and I didn't talk about, I don't have it pulled up here, but I usually have the pace pulled up. Uh, San Francisco plays at a top 10 pace in the league. I believe it's like 6th or 7th. Uh, that's opposed to the Giants who are 29th in the league in pace. Um, so this is a pretty big pace up spot for the Giants. Uh, they are going to San Francisco, so I'm assuming San Francisco will do their best to dictate the pace in this matchup. Um, that typically holds more true with NBA as far as home teams dictating pace, but it also holds true with NFL as well uh, to a lesser extent. But I do think you can you can sort of give a slight boost to all the Giants skill position players as well as Eli Manning because they are in a pace up spot. Uh, but yeah, with that all being said, uh, that is a quick 20 minute video about uh, the Monday Night Football Showdown. Again, you can follow me uh, on Twitter at Really Addy. Um, you can follow the two guys I run, Locks DFS with, at Taylor Stuber and at By Hardy on Twitter. And then you can follow the company at Locks DFS. Um, if you want to reach out to any of us, feel free to. Um, we are always running a giveaway where if you just comment below, uh comment on any of our videos like we just kind of pick throughout the week we see who's been commenting who's been active who's been saying positive stuff and then we just pick one of those people uh as a winner for a free season pass to either nhl nba or nfl um this week's winner has already been selected or i should say last week's uh winner has already been selected that winner was announced on taylor's video his locks and sleepers for this monday nba slate so go check out that video to see if you won. He did announce it in the beginning, so check that out. Um, and, yeah, check out the website. Let us know if you guys are interested or anything else you want to see from us. And with that all being said, let's win some money tonight, y'all. Peace.